English okay so as you know English has two papers in paper one you have composition writing then in paper two you have general grammar comprehension and summary all right so paper one you have composition writing so here are a few guidelines on dealing with compositions number one read the question carefully then number two plan your work number three paragraph your composition number four use correct grammar and use the right punctuations then number five Keep it simple and stick the number of words. So number one, it's important for you to read the question to understand what exactly is being asked. Then number two, plan your work. You cannot write a good composition without planning. Therefore, spend some time planning what you're going to write about. Then after you've planned and you've come up with ideas, make sure you paragraph your composition. Each idea should have its own uh, paragraph. And then use the correct grammar and be mindful of punctuation. And then keep it simple and stick the number of words stipulated. Therefore, just use the words that you know and make sure your composition is within the word limit. Okay, so this is the paper structure. In section A, you're required to answer one question. And then in section B, the question is compulsory. All right, so for section A, you're certain that in each year, a question will come on argumentative composition, discursive composition, narrative compositions, and so on. Therefore, it's important that by term three, grade 12, you're comfortable with at least two types of compositions. It could be discursive, argumentative, narrative, and so on. So that's very important. So you practice them, you see how best you can tackle each type of composition. And then for section B, you do not know which one is going to come. Therefore, it's important for you to know the format of each type of composition, be it uh, a report, a speech, uh, a letter, and so on. So you can also use elimination method. If in the past two years, as an example, a speech and a report came, so this year you should be looking at topics like letter writing and so on. All right. And then composition guidelines, basically, title your composition and underline the title. Then the introduction, it should catch the reader's eye. Make sure you give an idea of what the essay will be about in an interesting way. Preferably, use only one paragraph for the introduction. Then the main body, each idea should have its own paragraph. Don't write one long paragraph with many ideas. Give as much information as possible about the topic, but be mindful of the number of words stipulated. Write at least three paragraphs. Then finally, the conclusion. This is where you should give your final thoughts and opinions. Keep it short and precise. One or two paragraphs will be enough. Write down the number of words at the end of the composition. And it's also good practice to use some proverbs, idioms, and phrasal verbs in your composition to show that you've got a wide vocabulary. Okay, so when you're planning, of course, you're going to have different ideas. So make sure that each idea has its own paragraph so that you can expand the main body. And then you just conclude by giving your thoughts and opinions. All right, so that's how you write a composition. Of course, there are different formats, but basically this is the general uh, guideline for writing a good composition. So the key is to plan well. And then in paper two, we have the first part is vocabulary. So the best way to improve your vocabulary is by reading. Whenever you come across a new word, make it a habit to look it up in the dictionary and try to use it in other sentences. All right, so on vocabulary, you can get fill in the blanks, A, B, C, D, and so on. So you, again, here you, you need a lot of practice from past papers and pamphlets. Then on rewrites, the easiest way to master rewrites is by practice. Make sure you answer as many questions as possible from past papers and pamphlets. Use pamphlets a lot because they also give the solutions. Understand how sentences are joined, e.g. you must know that no sooner goes with than, etc. You also need to be mindful of the punctuation because if you write a sentence with wrong punctuation, everything will be wrong. Okay, so comprehension. Comprehension tests your understanding of a particular passage, read the passage once, then briefly look at the questions just to have an idea of what to look out for the second time you read the passage. Go back to the passage and try to understand it and then start answering the questions. Understand the question first and then refer to the passage for the right answer. Be very careful with answers that seem too obvious. Make sure you're mindful of your time because this section usually consumes a lot of time. Finally, summary writing. So your ability to summarize a passage is tested here. Stick to the number of words instructed. Summarize the passage in one paragraph. Underline the main points in the passage and don't forget to include them in your summary. Only include the main ideas of the topic. Understand what the question is asking you to summarize exactly. Then don't include unnecessary details. Then your summary should make grammatical sense. Write correct and complete sentences by joining them using conjunctions like and, or, and so on. 
then finally indicate the number of words you've used it's good practice just to indicate the number of words you've used in your summary